We shall yes. now go on to our next speaker, Dr. R.K. Bansal, who is a medical director of Bansal Eye and Retina Center, Chandigarh, and again, a very dynamic surgeon and is a very important figure in the North Zone of Thalmic Society, and not just that, a national figure too. And he's going to be telling us the challenges of a torn dexis in a mature intumescent cataract. On to you, Dr. Bansal. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Chitra, for a wonderful introduction. And thank you, ARC, for giving me this opportunity. As you mentioned, I am going to talk about phacomulsification in a toner axis whenever we face the problem of a mature intermittent cataract. All of us know we face this problem many a times during cataract surgery. That patient comes late and there is already a swollen mature cataract as you can see in this video. So there is a necessity to stain the capsule because there is no red glow in these patients. So trypan blue was used to stain the capsule. And then a high viscosity, viscoelastic was used to push the capsule back. And you see, just when I puncture, there is a leak of the liquid material. So what one can do is to aspirate the cortical matter so that you bring the intral lenticular pressure a little down. So I was sure that this patient will do a good capsular axis. So started with a nice capsular axis with a capsular forceps. And you can see here, just on this side, there is a tear of the capsule and it is going to extend into the periphery. So this is a dilemma we face. If we don't face an urgent enough accent, sometimes we can face the extension of the uh, rexis right into the periphery. So here we have to see whether we are the, 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 the tear is extending into the uh, posterior capsule or not. So one can see the motility flap sign and see the other uh, evidence which will be there if there is a uh, uh, extension of the rexis into the posterior capsule. So usually using low parameters here, because I already know that there is extension of the capsule into the periphery. So we have to be very manipulative and see that we can bring out the nucleus into the anterior chamber and do the chopping of the nucleus here and do the phacoemulsification. So this patient, the lens was not very hard. It was just grade two. So it was possible to bring the nucleus out of the back and then do the phacoemulsification. So using very slow parameters and carrying on with the phaco emulsification. And usually these patients don't have much loose cortex. So some aspiration of the cortex may be required in patients. So again, one has to be very, very careful. Uh, use very low parameters. This is the part of the epinucleus. So this was a single piece IL, which was arranged for this patient. And it is always possible to put the lens in the back, but only thing one has to keep in mind that the haptics of the lens are perpendicular to the area of the, the tear of the, or the extension of the anterior capsule. So this patient had a multifocal lens. So here I'll further rotate the lens so that the haptics are in a different direction. So this patient I can see because of the, uh, there is a little bit wound burn. So the patient required one single suture so that there is a stability of the interior chamber. So single suture was applied to maintain a nice interior chamber at the end of surgery. The pupil could be constricted with using intracameral pilocarpin. aspiration of the viscoelastic at the end of surgery. So one can really do a nice implantation in the, even if there is extension of the rexis. So extension of rexis can occur during the CCC. It is more so common, especially if there is a mature intermittent cataract. So we should try to control that we prevent the further extension of the rexis and we can look for a flab motility sign so that we know that the extension has not gone right into the pusher capsule. We use low parameters so that uh, the fluid X in a such a way so that the fluid pressure is not there on the capsule and the further extension of the axis can be prevented. And always try to do a fragment chopping which is outside the back. And always orient the lens perpendicular to the torn axis. Thank you very much you very for much. all. Yes, thank you very much Dr. Bansal for your pearls of wisdom. But the, for the sake of discussion, we are going to 
dairy cup uh, piecemeal. Uh, so what I would, uh, I felt that if you had not gone, of course, you're a very experienced surgeon. I've seen so many of your life surgeries. The thing is, if you had not gone through the main incision, you know, you end up shallowing the anterior chamber when you go to the main incision to make your excess. And in these total hypermature, intumescent cataract, excess extension and occur, had you gone to the side port and had a snug fit micro forceps and made a small round rexus and then nicked it and enlarged it, it's a greater chances of it being uh, successful, but you did manage very well. Um, and uh, before we go on to discuss other ways of intumescent cataract, I would want to ask Dr. Malay and Dr. Manisha and Dr. Virendra Ragdwal and Amohan, would, would, what would be the challenge we would have by placing a multifocal lens in these eyes with a torn rexus? Would there be any challenge at all in the first place? Yes, so I think the moment I saw the multifocal lens, uh, I started having a question uh, because you see, once the capsulotomy is not centered and it's just teeth is torn, we are not sure about centration. And uh, there are concerns about multifocality in itself. I would prefer not to use a multifocal lens. That's my take. If it had been a smaller area of excess extension and three-fourths of the capsule overlap was there, probably we could still think. Mohan? First of all, uh, uh, why did he get a rexus extension in the beginning, in the intermittent cataract? There are many ways to avoid this. One, one is to... Uh, you able to hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yes, yes. Uh, one is to put in a 27 gauge or a, or a, a 26 gauge needle into the anterior compartment, try to aspirate the fluid and then go ahead with the rexis. Of course, you need to use uh, uh, things like uh, a soft shell technique like Hialon and Viscot uh, mm -hmm. for, for this particular to prevent. The other thing, of course, you know, uh, what I'm going to talk about is a puncture rexis, which I'm doing for all these patients. Patients can afford I do the femtorexis. So once you can, you are not able to avoid that. Then you have to see the, the Bansal has managed it very well. Once you have a rexis tear, I would not do any trenching at all. Okay. I will do direct vertical yes. chopping because the vertical chopping, what you do is you just go in, bury your phaco tip, lift it slightly, lift it slightly from the back. Okay. Not too much into the anterior chamber. Of course, you need to put replenish with visco now and then to prevent uh, i don't mind losing some endothelial cells but i don't want this extension of this uh, rexis of course a flap motility sign is one way of doing it and a strict no to multifocal lens especially when you have tears on both sides and in this particular case a multifocal lens i would not uh, uh, have used i would have just put a regular lens for this unifocal lens for the patient uh, dr rajan just uh, one comment as far as this um, Argentina flag sign has been discussed so so many times, you see, and uh, I, I am lucky not to see many. What I do, I universally use methyl cellulose. I never use this uh, high viscosity thing. I just make a central puncture. Most of the time in these capsules, the fluid comes out in the entry chamber, then it gets deflated. It goes out of the incision. And then you see... Um, the rexus becomes very easy. And no, 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 it's not as easy no, as you no, mentioned. No, no, Please no. understand, uh, Malay, there are three types of mature cataracts. I have done a lot of work. I, in fact, I, I can do a thesis on this, actually. But there are three types of mature cataract. One is a type 1, type 2, and type 3. Type yeah. 1 is the most dangerous. The intraventricular pressure is very high. As soon as you touch, it will go to the periphery. Okay. And that is very, very typical. So even if you do a smaller rexus, sometimes... Many people have advocated that, but uh, the uh, uh, the only foolproof method today is the femto platform for this uh, type of cataracts. So we get thecomorphic glaucoma, and the whiter the cataract, the lower the socioeconomic status of the patient. So sometimes all they can afford is even if you puncture, like you're talking about the type one cataracts, so anyway they're thecomorphic glaucoma. Pressure is above fifty. The moment you just puncture the capsule, you get this. Fluid is so you can still manage because after that again uh, put viscoelastic stain the capsule initially. So staining of the capsule helps more viscoelastic and like ma'am said, try to make a smaller excess. These are things that we can do. 
I have to use the side port to use the micro rexis for them. And that's why I also suggested doing the other capsule or something. You make a little curvy linear rexis. You make a not a linear incision. Make it little curvy linear. Change the direction, and that itself could prevent the thing. Uh, yeah, course. this is what I did today. Also, I had another patient with a mature interim and cataract. So, yeah. rather than giving a linear incision, I just curved the incision. Yes, it makes and very good. well after that could complete the rexis. Yes. Uh, as for the micro forceps is concerned, they have to be handy because I was not having handy those uh, micro forceps uh, that time. So, sometimes you have to use the whatever is available so that yes. I, you can do a good rexis. Yes. So another point I think about the multifocal. Yes, I do agree. But this patient we have arranged the multifocal lens, yeah, and yeah. if we are able to cover the margins, as Dr. Chitra also mentioned, that if we know yeah. that at the end of surgery we can cover the margins of the, the of the lens with the capsular, then I think these uh, patients do well. And this patient, in fact, did very well after that. Yeah. Yes. But any possibility if there is an extension towards the posterior capsule, then de definitely we should try to use a three-piece lens. Yeah. Thank you very much.